We're going to have a look at um, the magnificent sight of Nemanja Nandolo kicking for goal. What word would you use to describe this kicking style? I, I'll offer you languid. Have a look at it and then see what you think. I'm sure I've seen a player built like him kicking, kicking in international rugby. He's seriously big. Well, he might be big, but he, he, he kicks this like it's some kind of precious egg, I promise you. Look at this. Nandolo bids white jersey farewell. Nemanja Nandolo will not be part of the Flying Fijians campaign at this year's Rugby World Cup in Japan. Nandolo is the second player in two days to announce his retirement from international rugby after Timothy Nungusa did so on Wednesday. How many people stay in Fiji? <coughs> 800,000. Okay. 850 million. That's 900,000. Yeah! They win. Oh, hey. The 30 year old Montpellier winger this morning revealed on his official Facebook account that he has decided to call it a day in playing for Fiji. Nandolo thanked the Almighty for getting him to where he is today. He said when he first donned the jersey back in 2010, he never thought he would have played this long in representing Fiji. Nandolo thanked the coaches, trainers, physios, players and the people that he had come in contact with during his career. The 130kg winger also thanked Fijians in Fiji and abroad. Nandolo said with the depth and current crop of outside backs coming through, he has no doubt that the next caretakers of the jersey will do a better job. Nandolo added he faced a few challenges over the last 18 months, both on and off the field. Nemanja Nandolo scored a total of 19 tries in 13 tests for Fiji. His last match for Fiji was against Tonga at Churchill Park in Hawaii. Watching my father play every weekend was probably the earliest uh, memory I had playing rugby. So, I'm very excited to be a ball boy. I think it was cool. Yeah, rugby is very much a big part of our uh, grandfather used to say you either go to university or you play rugby. And then when my mother and father divorced, um, you know, I took the reins to, you know, to look after the family and help out with mum. And, I knew I had this talent, I knew I was good enough to, to become a professional. I think that's when it changed um, for me. Um, you know, to earn a bit of money to help out with me old lady. And so 2010 it was my last year at the White Class. I just wanted to you know, come overseas. And, um, I didn't know anything about the club at the time. I just knew that they were in the top 14 and that was enough for me. And I came over here and might be used to back home to professionalism and you know, everything from off the field and on the field At the time I had my two younger brothers, Chris and Nossi, who were still in high school. The old man not in the picture there for a few years, I sort of uh, took the helm and I, I used rugby as a... Initially it was just a way to make money, to put money on it. Good morning, welcome to that today. Uh, your first impressions, you've settled in well? Yeah, uh, selling really well. Uh, once the boys are in the team, uh, you know, the facilities are, uh, are awesome. Uh, so, very professional, I thought it was obviously it's been very good for me. Uh, the workload, while well, you know, good training's been awesome, and uh, it's full of good sore today, so no, other than that, mate, it's, it's awesome, and uh, yeah, love, love it. Chiefs are most definitely turned to South Sea Island muscle today. Between them, Sorelli, Nakalabuki, and the Arnie Nadolo, 12 foot 8 and 38 stones. Nadolo makes his first premiership start. Tommy Hayes to drop down for his first try for Kane. Straight from the restart. A brilliant kick to gather. But Sorelli Nakabuki in one of the best run tries of the seal season. It's another big loss. This time 13 points to 9. And a visit to a desperate lead side on Saturday. Let's see if they can get that. Premiership winners, and so for me to be like. You know, 
this is probably my opportunity now to, to try and uh, you know, shine and do what I can do to try and push for a selection. You know, at the time, I was still, you know, trying to support my family and trying to support um, the, my old lady, and you know, I, I still had my brother. stuff with Exeter there, and, and um, you know, I wanted to be close to home, and uh, you know, Japan was, was was where I set up shop for for four seasons. Because he was the tallest guy in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> They are fit and focused for the task ahead. We focus on the guys that we do have, so we spend a lot of time putting in and getting the team to play the Highlanders and you know, rebuilding the engine with the guys getting them nice and fit and strong. Two chance for Johnny McNichol last week. Jack, the most experienced outside back. And the first start for Massive Nadola on the right wing. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
it back and Perinara has it. Now they attack through Smith. Milner Scudder shields. He holds it up for Dane Coles. And Cole scores the Hurricane. And snapped up and here's an opportunity straight away for the Hurricanes as the pass is made now. That's just a quick bang and then Milner Scudder slips it back and Adi Sabi is sprinting for the line. Until that last 10 minutes in the sin bin, you guys look very composed. Give us your thoughts on the first 40. Yeah, I thought we controlled the territory really well in the first 30 minutes and you know, we weren't playing too much in our half and we wanted to build pressure and get him to make mistakes in their half and you know, take the points when they're on offer. And you decided to back himself. Unfortunately, Van Milner Scudder was the first player on his radar and he got through him. Now Perinara drops the pass off and not quite there. Perinara is trying to free it up. Being held up off the ground and that'll be it. That is surely the end of the game and deservedly so and got a bonus point as well to score their seventh win of the season, 35-18. Namani Dolop and he is downstairs. Namani, I bet you're smiling. What a great way to bounce back. Yeah, exactly. You know, we were disappointing loss last week and you know a lot of people were, were, were riding us off, but tonight we showed it and um, the boys fronted up tonight, which was really good. I'm interested in your thoughts on your role because they use you a lot taking into contact. Yet the odd time we see you in space, you're awesome. What do you think of this role? Oh, it's awesome. You know, it means, you know, taking the, the, the boys forward and so be it. And I'm, I'm just happy to be on the field and, you know, um, contributing to what I can. So, you know, a few, few bus ups there, up in the middle and, um, yeah, it's happy days. Where they want you, absolutely bounced a couple of guys. I have to ask you a personal question. How much do you weigh now? Oh, I'm still uh, rocking the weights at about 1.30, so just quietly. <laughs> and finally, you're going to Fiji to see the family next week. How are they? Yeah, it's good. Um, I'll be over there to see the family, not only the family, but the other people of Fiji and helping out wherever I can with the rebound. Uh, uh, satellite interpretation of the storm. Now, there's some very important things that I'd like to point out with the eye wall of the storm as it passes uh, just to the north of Suva, just uh, the capital of Fiji. It is starting to uh, deteriorate and disorganize the center of the storm. So, to me... Okay, John, I'm in Nangandamu village on Koro Island. Eight people died here in Cyclone Winston in February. Uh, children were drowned in the storm surge. The whole island was affected. Officially, that means that it is interacting with land and that landfall has occurred. That's very important because uh, with a direct hit like this, we would expect the uh, strongest of winds to have occurred when that eye wall passed over. People behind me have been living in very basic uh, camping tents, small corrugated... And Crusaders coach Todd Blackburn knows they have an advantage playing here in Fiji as their fan base is huge. Some fans even turned up at the Osorio International Airport this morning to catch a glimpse of the stars they watch on TV.
course. Um, yeah, we've got the most Fijis in our team, so uh, I mean, this is a rugby mad nation. I've been here on holiday myself, and I've, I, I call it a training camp because you can't get to relax because you always play rugby. But um, this is a rugby mad nation. It's a really special, unique place in the world. Uh, we're so pleased to be here, and I know that this, uh, the stadium is going to be sold out. Uh, the minister is telling me that they've had to put extra seats in. I just hope everyone turns up and really enjoys the game. Himani Ndolo and the Crusaders plan to donate some school stationery to those affected by severe tropical cyclone Winston. Ndolo hopes to deliver the stationery with other players to schools in Lebuka and Ra. The Namatakula Flyer visited some of those affected areas about three months ago and knows too well how important school children need assistance. We um, I'll meant to do a thing today, but um, we've come together with the money that we've, we've raised and we've uh, buying school books and <laughs> Already from the Waratahs, the area that come back with some composure. Wasn't that an interesting image just there? Kieran Reid laying down the law to uh, Richie McCaw and Dan Carter. Take your choice. So Bernard Foley is to the left of the uprights. And 36 metres back. It's not a bad strike. Once again, he sends it down the middle. And that's a record for Bernard for before he heads to Ireland to play for Leinster next season. Beal out to Bernard Foley. And Ndolo takes it. Gives it back to Israel Berg and he gets the ball. Good chasing game. Boyle's on the spot. 
Back again to Foley. That's a beauty. Over the top and in the top. Targeted in Dolo's wing. Phipps. Kepu on the 22. Back now to Foley. Just gets the kick away. Comes down for Ndolo. And again, he just has a bit of a problem with the kick. Yeah, it is indeed. They look like they've rallied him. Composed himself a bit. Five man line up between four and half back. He looks to drive this and then Richie might bounce, bounce out. Ellis breaks away now. Dan Carter hurting now. He's not taking a shot at goal, Collins. Than anything he hasn't done. Played in the 2005 2008 final win over the Waratahs with Richie McCaw. He scored 80% of the Crusaders, but for Dan Carter, an absolute champion in the game. Crusaders do. Well, that's it. That's the first half at ANZ Stadium. Half and, um, we to work harder off the ball so we can lift the volume up, you know. Crusaders haven't played us this year and they probably think we're going to fall down in the second half. What we've got to do is keep growing, keep the pace of the game moving and just keep coming until the end of the game. And tomorrow's match will test Australia's small back line, the obvious chink in our armour. It's frustrated insiders who claim the Wallabies have missed out on the next Jonah Lomu. They call him the big show and the resemblance is uncanny. 22-year-old Nemanja Nandolo is the same height, but two kilos heavier than the All Blacks legend in his prime. Over the too good to be true. Think again. Dumped by the Waratahs, he signed with a French club. It'll be 
McKibben! A 19-year wait is over. It's third time lucky. Denied in 05, denied in 08 by the Crusaders, but victorious in 2014. Crusaders have been struck by racial abuse filled at winger Nemani Nandolo in Christchurch. It's upset the Fiji and his teammates and coaches. After the disappointment of losing the Super Rugby final, the Crusaders are now having to tackle an unsavoury incident. Fiji and winger Nemani Nandolo was taunted in a Christchurch bar last night, confirming on Twitter the N-word was used. Old mate had a bit too much to drink and you know, I was a little bit annoyed that we lost and he'd come out and, and the N-word was thrown around. Uh, you know, I was probably gobsmacked, I was like, wow. You know, it does surprise us to happen. Uh, it hurt him, and, and so it should. You know, when people are going to use racist slurs, uh, you couldn't help it, but be hurt. But he's certainly moved on. You know, I've learned over the years to just walk away from it. Blackadder says some of Nindolo's teammates were with him at the time, including Matt Todd, Corey Flynn, and Ryan Crotty. The man he didn't react. He didn't tell the rest of the guys either. He just kept the turn. So, had I not been a professional person or a public person, I probably would have done something. That's just the honest truth, but you know we've we're, we've got an obligation to to be whether we like it or not to be role models in, in this place. The, the, my thinking is that you know the, the vast vast majority of people don't have attitudes like that, and it's always a very small minority of people. Blackadder told Nandolo today the incident shouldn't be a reflection on Crusaders fans. And welcome back to sports. The kickoff to the Rugby World Cup is now just 36 hours away with England hosting Fiji at Twickenham in the highly anticipated opening match. It'll be the biggest moment for the Pacific Island nation on the world rugby stage. The best Vodafone flying Fijians players left the Grand Pacific Hotel this afternoon bound for Nandi. Uh, but no, we're always close. Uh, we really, every time we went to school, you know, we were really two grades apart from each other. So um, he'd always look after me in primary school and, and high school. And yeah, he's always... Um, I guess kind of set the standards and not just footy but off the field as well. There's one Fiji and he's certainly well known in Crusader land. Would you say this is the biggest game of your life? Yeah definitely, the, the, probably the, be the highlight of my career thus far and you know um, it's just what every kid, uh, kid dreams of you know as a rugby player growing up. Cell, uh, in, in that cell that night made me realise like you know if I, if I didn't make the right decisions it, I'd be you know, not even having myself and my family, and uh, this, this could be taken away from you pretty quickly. We've obviously got a very good set piece, the line is good, and then the back line has got X Factor across the board. Not just X Factor, but physicality and size and power. to the kickoff. This is the Fijian side tonight. Um, they're typical of so many of the so-called second tier nations in that all their players actually compete away from their home nation. So nine of these players play in France, one in New Zealand, one in Scotland, one in Romania, two in Germany. If we were to pick out one name, look for the man number 11, Nandolo, six foot four, 20 stars, and he also kicks goals. He is almost, he is Jonah Loom. Jonah Loom with the Lenko Masters. I played soccer for when I was a young fella growing up, and you know, that's what sort of hand my kicking skills are. Actually, the qualifying competition for the Rugby World Cup began in March 2012 when Mexico beat Jamaica in Mexico City, and three and a half years and hundreds of matches later, this is the World Cup proper. Maybe teammates. So it was World War Cup having walked out of the away dressing room. For every team here, every single player in this tournament, this, the time of their lives, at the start of a tournament that will change lives. They call him the big show. He's, he's, a, he's a quality player, he's shown that in his Super Rugby this season. The boys are all pumped, you know, we've been talking about it. Um, yeah, for the last, uh, like, the I can't show him. Well, it is, but I'm just being much a really good guy, but... He sang the anthem, I've sung it a few, you know, a lot of times before that. You know, and one time he sang it, uh, it was I started crying pretty heavily because of just everything I'd gone through, everything I'd done off the field, on the field, good, good stuff, bad stuff, had all just come to that one point.
runners, you know, almost victims of their own ability to really explode off the bench and have a... Which you will certainly feel his force. Party.